My time at Porsche may remind many people of Stardew Valley. Heading in, this was all I could think about. One of the stories that felt unfinished in Stardew was the tale of Abigail. She wanted to be a great adventurer, but got scared of bats one time and decided against it. So, I wanted to give Abigail a new chapter, and build her for my player character in Portia. My headcanon states that she still yearned for adventure after that bat incident, and headed off to Portia so she could live the adventurer's life she never would in her hometown. Also, I hear things didn't work out with that guy she was seeing, and he practically was the entire industry of Pelican Town by that time, which made things awkward. Anyway, this is Abigail's time at Portia. Starting out, I had to pick Abigail's birthday, which is canonically Fall 13. However, the game alerted me to an event taking place on that day which could affect my party. I wanted all attention on me, so I moved her birthday back to the 14th, which feels highly realistic to how actual birthdays work. Why don't we just have your birthday after the annual land run? Yeah, sure, whatever, Mom. And like that, I was finally off to Portia on a boat. Get your towels ready. It's about to go down. I met a couple ladies doing hot yoga in the park. Looking spicy, ladies. Keep up the good work. Then I stumbled upon my building rival, Higgins. I promptly challenged him to a duel, which I obviously lost because I was level 1. I was as gracious in defeat as he wasn't in victory. So I started picking herbs, at which point I was introduced to my new friend, the Caterpillar. This Caterpillar knew the score, and he wasn't shy about showing his swagger. The rest of my day was spent kicking trees. At first, I didn't understand why kicking trees is a popular pastime in Portia. Then I leveled up and all became clear. Kicking trees was my new jam. Since it was getting late, I headed back to my workshop, which is also my home. The story states that this was once my father's workshop, which makes no sense as Pierre was focused primarily on selling overpriced seeds back in Pelican Town. However, it did show in the state of the floor, which needed several repairs. Pierre was never good with wood, except that one time. Luckily, Abigail proved to be much craftier, and repairs went swiftly. Tree kicking had led me to level 3, so I put some points into tool efficiency, and set out to thwack trees with my axe. However, my axe still sucked, so I settled for taking my aggression out on bushes instead. At the Commerce Guild, I met Arlo and learned that the town wanted to build a bridge. Since I had been in town a whole three days, they realized I was the right gal for the job. Whenever anyone makes the argument that video games cause violence, I shall point to this moment when a game deliberately instructed me to build a literal bridge. I rest my case. I then visited an old lady who sells seeds, just like Pierre. I did the only logical thing and challenged her to a duel. However, the game made me fight baby chicks instead, which are impossible to hit. I feel the game was trolling me, but I suppose I started it. Then it was off to the mines to collect resources and artifact pieces. Then it was time for the big fishing tournament, which I didn't understand I had to register for and just started fishing like a chump. After a frustrating battle with a goliath, I caught the sucker. Now if anyone asks me if that's a goliath in my pocket, or am I happy to see them, I can unironically say, it's the fish. Also, there was an anthropomorphic bear. At the town meeting, Mayor Gale let everyone in on plans to build a bridge to Amber Island, which came as a shock to Higgins, since no one asked him to help. I then opened a chest and got some salad sauce, which just sounds wrong. That caterpillar knows what I'm talking about. He doesn't need any salad sauce to have a good time. A whole 14 days into coming to this town, I had built them a lovely bridge. Small wonder considering Abigail had never built a single thing in Pelican Town except a high score in Journey of the Prairie King. The big event for spring is the Day of the Bright Sun, where a blimp drops presents around town. In the spirit of friendship, I knocked down all the other residents to get some sweet new material possessions. It was like a Black Friday simulator. I love it. Around this time, I was introduced to these two idiots, who insisted that my father was 50,000 gold in debt, and it was my responsibility to pay. I tried hitting them with a sword as they scampered away, but it was futile. 
I decided to take things to the authorities, and ratted them out to Arlo. A few days later, they returned looking for their money, only to be greeted by my new BFF who ran them off. I still tried hitting them with a sword to no avail. Luckily, there were still enemies who would taste the sting of my wooden blade, namely some thieving rats who took the townspeople's belongings simply because they are hoarders and won't admit to having a problem. I encountered a giant crustacean inside the cave and felled him. He died as he lived, with crabs. I smacked down the Bandarad prince and recovered the lost possessions. I then proceeded to smash all the pottery, as is customary among my people. Once outside, Arlo and his Squirtle Squad congratulated me on doing their job for them. Since I had become full of determination and no one else could be bothered, I began building the town's entire public transportation system. I gave a couple DD transports to Antoine, who is fabulous, and was well on my way to bringing a whole new infrastructure to the town. However, I felt there was unfinished business I had to address, and so I grabbed my magical hat of coolness and headed off to the cave a second time, where I could finally confront these two losers. I could at last hit them with weapon attacks, and to their dismay, I had just upgraded my blade from wood to metal. They licked their wounds, and then did what they do best, run away. And so ended Abigail's first month in Portia. Upon day one of summer, I received a letter saying I was already ranked in the number two position among workshops. While I feel they could have phrased that better, the cash prize was a gift horse I would not look in the mouth. I would have gotten the top ranking if Higgins didn't suck, but there's always summer. And that will do it for this episode. Join me next time to see how Abigail fares in the new season.